welcome everyone to this slightly delayed um, start to the um, to the webinar. Um, this is uh, organised by the uh, London South Branch of the British Computer Society, and uh, I guess it's our pre-Christmas um, meeting. So happy Christmas, everyone. <laughs> However. <clears throat> um, in previous years, we would, of course, had this as an online meeting. Uh, oh, sorry, we would have had this as a live meeting, um, probably in the um, BCS London offices. But um, uh, as it is, uh, we're online and we're very pleased to welcome as our presenter, uh, Sherilyn Atkin, who is a key account manager with the BCS. Notes on the subject. Um, uh, and uh, she manages um, some of the um, cor corporate accounts, uh, in particular, provides support to uh, organizations and in the individual members to get sure they get to get to ensure they get the best experience from BCS membership. And, and this includes using the Sophia Plus framework. Um, which, of course, enables people to take responsibility for their own professional development. Um, and um, we um, hope to be able to arrange further meet, further webinars next year. We may even return to the um, London BCS um, of offices um, if circumstances uh, permit. So I think I'll stop waffling and hand over to Sherilyn. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sharon. Thank you very much for that introduction, Chris, and good evening, everybody, and thank you for the invite to present. Um, I've worked for BCS for around 15 years and the last five years as a key account manager. Um, so as Chris said, my role is to support um, organisations um, and help them develop the skills and capability of the staff, but also to help individuals get the best out of BCS membership. Um, so what I'm going to do is come off um, camera now, so hopefully I don't have any issues with bandwidth and the presentation. Um, and if you've got any questions, if you want to type them into the chat and then um, hopefully Chris will be able to pick those up. Um, we are obviously a bit tight for time now, but I'll do my best to answer any during this session. But my contact details are at the end of the presentation. So if you've got any further questions about anything that we talk about this evening or anything else about BCS, please do feel free to get in touch um, with me um, and I'd be happy to then take that up with you separately. Right, so I'm just going to... Okay, so for some of the you that may not be members of BCS, um, BCS, as the Chartered Institute for IIT, has a royal charter to promote and, um, the advancement of education and practice of computing. So that can be from securing the role of computing in schools um, to introducing recognised standards. So um, about five years ago, we were instrumental in changing the curriculum in schools from ICT to computational thinking. And more recently, we've worked closely with the NHS to introduce the Federation of Informatics Professionals, or short for short, FedIP, um, across the digital NHS, which enables the professionals there to get recognition for the work they're doing and to um, also have the opportunity to appear on a public register. So everything we do is built around our five strategic pillars, which help us raise standards, but also realise the greater potential within the tech industry. And these pillars are supporting careers, sharing experience, improving education, influencing practice and driving standards. Now, you know, we can't achieve success at BCS and drive change without the involvement of its members and it's people like yourself attending um, groups as this and getting involved that make the difference. We work closely with academia, so we accredit qualifications and contribution to syllabuses such as the Masters AI. And we're trusted by government to contribute to crucial policy making activity. We're also a leading digital and IT qualification body and offer a range of widely recognised professional and end user qualifications. And these are done through our accredited training provider. And we're also a leading endpoint assessor for digital apprenticeships. 
So where do our members come from? We have a membership community of over 60,000 members, and they've joined us as a result of different interactions with BCS. So route to membership could be through taking a BCS professional certification, um, and those cover anything from agile, um, AI, business analysis, project management, cyber, solution development and architecture, or it could be one of our higher education qualifications. They could have been um, become part of our computing at schools or CAS as it's known um, within BCS community, which provides resources and support from teachers through our apprenticeships. Or it could be uh, members have joined through reciprocal agreements with other institutions, and that's just to name a few. Most members join um, BCS directly um, because they want to belong um, to their professional body and um, they want to um, get the recognition and they want to get access to the community. But there's 22 percent of our members that join through organizational membership partnerships and those are what Chris mentioned earlier that I tend to get um, evolved in on a regular basis. So just for your information what is organizational membership well we basically um, wrap our arms around the organization as well as the member to try and bring um, the, the partnership to life. So organizations typically enter into an annual organizational membership agreement and we provide their staff uh, BCS membership and access to the professional standards. So we you know, most organisations are obviously really keen more than ever, particularly around uh, what's happened recently in the pandemic to support career progression and raise the profile of, the, of their teams, um, not only internally, but also outside the organisation. And they want to help staff take personal responsibility for their careers. So organisational membership provides complementary standards as a proportion of the membership places that they take up. And I talk regularly to OM coordinators around what engagement we can do with them and what networking opportunities there are to work together. But also we run workshops to help staff attain professional recognition. Some organisations can attain approved organisation status, either silver, gold or platinum. And this shows their commitment to raising professionalism standards but also it's in recognition of their contribution and support of BCS. So it's how they get involved in other aspects of the life of BCS. I'm sure most of you are probably already members. So you're aware of the benefits of being a member and particularly how networking and attending BCS events such as tonight's event can help you grow professionally. But today I'll be highlighting tools, services and benefits available as a member to hopefully help you get the most out of your membership. In this slide, I just wanted to highlight because one of the things that we're looking at is around um, Sophia Plus and the tool um, that's available to BCS members, how BCS has aligned their professional certifications membership and the industry standards to the globally recognized industry framework and Sophia um, for those of you that don't know stands for skills framework for the information age so individuals can join BCS as a student or affiliate so that's somebody who has an interest in um, the uh, in digital and technology but most will um, join in entry level um, at associate level. So this is where the membership starts, um, AMBCS, and that's one year's experience or an equivalent qual um, qualification, HNC, HND and above, or a professional uh, BCF professional certification. The next level of membership is professional status or MBCS for post nominals, and that's looking at five years experience or an equivalent qualification or a combination of both. And the highest level of membership recognition um, available is fellowship, um, which recognizes em eminence, seniority and authority. So the highest uh, recognition you can achieve within BCS is to become a chartered fellow. And some people may hold both CITP, Chartered IT Professional Status, and CN, Chartered Engineer Recognition. And you can see from this slide that our standards start at Sophia Level 3, 
we've got um, incorporated engineer at level four, then the charter statuses uh, start at level five. And with the Fed IP, they also start at three, the summit four, and then five and higher. So when we're looking at uh, membership, but particularly the professional standards, our assessors who are volunteers will look at the criteria and they will benchmark people against that um, severe criteria. In the case of um, chartered, it's severe level five. But within the member secure area, um, you can actually browse Sophia Plus, which is a member tool. Now, the SOFIA framework um, has been adopted by organisations in over 180 countries, and it was first published in the early 2000s in consultation with other organisations, but this was spearheaded by BCS. The framework describes managing skills and competencies required for professionals working in a digital and technology environment. Now, the SOFIA Foundation was created, um, and that's a not-for-profit organisation, to oversee the continual development of the framework. And BCS still has two members of their executive team on the SOFIA board. The framework is updated every three years. We're now on version eight um, to reflect the um, evolving need of the industry. And the SOFIA framework is a 2D um, model or matrix, which includes um, 123 skills and seven levels of responsibility. And each, level, um, each of these levels of responsibility are split down as shown on this slide into autonomy, influence, complexity, and business skills. Now, BCS took this framework one stage further. And what we did is we worked with subject matter experts and we created the plus element. So quite often people will talk about Sophia, but within BCS, the part that you have access to is the plus, which is the extra granular information. This is only available through BCS um, and can be found in my BCS, um, the member secure area under develop my career. And I'm just going to, I'm going to show you that in a moment. So what we did is we turned the um, Sophia tool into a three dimensional tool, which um, provides this granular detail around each of the Sophia. And the Sophia descriptions are broken down into six key areas which is background work activities, knowledge and skills, training activities, personal development and qualifications. And what the framework enables you to do is map yourself against the rest of industry. It helps you take personal responsibility for your career and development. So you can explore the skills and plan and accelerate your development and close in any potential skills gap. You can um, look up levels, um, up higher level to see if um, what you need to achieve to go up a level, or if you're thinking of changing a career direction, you can look at what's required and work towards gaining the relevant experience. I work with um, organisations that um, use um, Sophia Plus um, with our skills and assurance platform um, called Role Model Plus. Um, and the reason for that is that um, staff can benchmark themselves against the framework and other industry frameworks and identify training needs. The outputs from Roggle Model Plus provide a valuable information to both the individual and the organisation. It ensures that um, individuals are continued to be invested in and continually developed, but importantly as well to make sure that they're able to meet the growing demands of the business. What I'm going to do now is um, come out of the presentation and um, go into the tool. I'm hoping now that you can see my login. Is that visible to you? Yes, yes, we've got it, Sharon. OK, thank you. Right, so what I'm going to have to do is go back in and right, log in. Hopefully it won't. There we go. OK, is that visible um, to everybody on screen? I can see it, yeah. Thank you. So if you go into career development, I'm now in the member secure area. Um, you can see there's access to lots of information here. If I scroll down, everything's at your fingertips, including um, 
uh, tools to help your career development, knowledge and resources, communities and events and getting involved. But for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to focus on Browse Sophia Plus. So if I take you into, and there is a video on theirs, which you can watch afterwards as well. But for those of you that haven't seen this, as I say, I think it's well worth seeing it um, as a live demonstration, if I can uh, get it to open up <laughs> and it's not too slow. Right, so the picture that you saw on the um, last slide now becomes a live version. So all the elements of the uh, PLUS framework now is um, visible and all the skills, and if I scroll down very slowly, you've got strategy and planning, security and privacy as the um, categories and under each of those you've got a number of skills governance and risk and compliance and so on and you can see there's higher titles as well like change and transformation development and implementation if i go down slowly delivery and operation and so on um, even down towards the bottom where you also have people and skills relationships and engagement which are all very um, important and as I say we do do a lot of work with organizations where we take job descriptions we create role profiles and all these sort of skill sets and not only looking at technical skills but soft skills as well um, go to create the job role profiles so that um, people can not only look at um, their technical competence but also their um, attitudes and behaviors and what's expected for a role of, at their level if I then um, just take one of these um, in random, so if, say, for example, I take Solution Architect, you'll notice that some of them don't start at the lower levels and some of them don't go up to the top levels. Now, the seven levels of responsibility are classes entry level and then you work your way up to obviously senior level. Um, and if I take, for example, Solution Architect, I'm going to take it at level five and I click on to that. I'm going to go to background first. So straight away, you can see there's, there's a, a, quite a bit of information on here. So the top is... Um, paragraph actually is the Sophia descriptor for that level. So solution architecture at level five, um, it starts off with leads the development of solution architects in specific business infrastructure or functional areas, etc. The tabs underneath the background work activities, knowledge skills, training, PDAs and qualifications are the plus element that I was just referring to in the presentation. So straight away, you can see that the plus element has provided background information for that description, Sophia description. It tells you what previous experience you're likely to have, what prior knowledge and skills, and what educational background you're likely to have. And this is, you know, in line with the, with the rest of industry. Obviously, from company to company, you know, these things can vary slightly, but it's a really good way of benchmarking, as I say, against the rest of industry. When you get to work activity, again, you can see that the um, paragraph has been split out into a lot more granular detail. And you can see on the last statement that actually mentions it's optional. So again, it's telling you what sort of things you'd be doing. And I've um, spoken to um, uh, senior management that have moved to organizations and it's been interesting to hear that you know some people have job roles but in actual fact um, they they might not be given be giving um, enough autonomy at certain level or they might not be experiencing some of the broader activity that perhaps they should be um, if if they were working at that level so this is a really good way of them you know being able to see if they need to be um, broadening what they do in terms of knowledge and skill. And when you get to knowledge and skills um, section, again, you can see there's an absolute wealth of information here. Now it starts off on the top. If you look at the second column to your right, it talks about behavioral skills. And as I say, as a professional, you have to demonstrate not only technical knowledge and skills, but behavioral skills as well. So it tells you what type of behavior you'd be exhibiting. 
And when you get down to the knowledge, uh, technical knowledge and skills, if you look at the second column to your left, you start looking at knowledge depth. So as you move through the responsibility levels, so the knowledge depth in certain activities will change. So in the beginning, um, yeah, the earlier um, responsibility levels, people might be expected to have an awareness. So you might have some knowledge and skills but, um, and a general idea, but you'll need a lot of direction. Then as you move up, you might be familiar with, so you'll be appropriately trained, um, that you're, you're, you'll have a reasonable amount of knowledge. But again, as I say, you'll, you'll still need some support. And then it as it shows here, some of them are proficient in. So you're, you're competent in your knowledge and skills and you're able to influence, advise and communicate your knowledge um, and, and support. And then there's one here, the IT environment, which actually says you're an expert in. So, again, you're highly trained, highly experienced and have a comprehensive knowledge of all aspects of that particular skill and component. Now, even at the top end. Um, not everything will be, you know, people won't be an expert in everything. So throughout the different skills levels, there will be a combination of these knowledge depths that people will be expected to um, achieve. And the great thing is it gives you that um, indication as to whether you feel you have knowledge at the right level. And if you don't, then that helps you make an informed decision about how you're going to go about attaining that knowledge. There's also um, recommendations for training. So again, a lot of information here around um, training that you could be undertaking. So again, you can have um, you lead conversations with your um, manager um, as to how you can go about um, having support for the training. And also even sort of other um, uh, development activities that you could be undertaking to help you um, achieve this level and move on to the next level. And again, I'll just scroll up very slowly. So I hope you get a chance to scan some of this. And as you see, there's a lot of information. And finally, the typical qualifications that would be recommended that you held if you were working at this level um, and um, for this skill. So, as I say, this is in the um, member secure area. Um, browse Sophia Plus. I really recommend that you um, take some time out if you haven't already. Explore this. Um, go up the skill. You know, look at other skills as well, and um, and use this because this is a powerful tool for you to have access to as a member. It uses a common language. Some organisations use it for um, recruitment. They use it for um, you know, when individuals are looking to go for promotion, they will look at skills and competencies required and then sort of um, create their um, uh, evidence as to how they might meet that role using this as a way of doing um, that and also for mapping out their own personal development. I'm just going to go back to the presentation now. So hopefully. Can you now see the presentation? Yes, we're back. That, with that's slide. lovely. Thank you. OK, so I'm just now going to move on to um, professional standards. Um, so when technology fails, we all know what a significant impact this can have on all, um, not only the organization's reputation, but also how it affects them financially. Um, we've seen recently in the news about the um, post office um, IT system. Um, I mentioned earlier about us working with the NHS and that started around when um, the cyber attack um, took place and also um, things like the, um, you know, Volkswagen car emissions and how that affected um, members of the public. And the IT profession is fast moving. It's still very young in comparison to other other professions. Um, however, a lot of senior management I talk to feel it's now impo more important than ever to encourage staff to gain professional recognition. 
This is not only so they receive independent endorsement of their skills and competence, but also so staff can stand shoulder to shoulder with other um, professionals, such as chartered engineers, chartered surveyors and chartered accountants. Um, you know, it is hard to tell from someone's CV or when you're talking to somebody really what level of knowledge and ability they have. But, you know, start having a standard um, and having those um, that recognition um, can be that differentiator. So if somebody says they're chartered and they're obviously linked to their professional body, it, it not only shows, you know, through the membership, they've signed up to a code of conduct, they're abiding by a code of ethics, they're giving back to their profession, but also it's got that credibility and a trust um, associated with that title so that you don't need to know the details about what they do, but you know they've had to demonstrate externally um, that they're working at a certain level. And that's, you know, around knowledge and experience. So standards quite often get called, you know, a qualification. Um, so my response to that is that qualifications demonstrate a snapshot of someone's knowledge at a given time, but that can quickly become out of date. Whereas holding a professional standard, what we're doing is we're looking at you holistically as a professional. We're looking at attitudes and behaviours, but also we're looking at the knowledge you've accrued through your working um, career and how you're applying that knowledge. And going back to what I was showing you in the um, Sophia tool as well, but how you influence, how you, um, you know, take, take the profession forward. Um, so... BCS awards um, are IT tech and chartered IT professional status. So they are BCS um, standards. So we are the regulatory body and the awarding body. But we've also been licensed by the Engineering Council to award ENG tech, ING and CENG. So engineering technician, incorporated engineer and chartered engineer. So applications for these um, uh, registrations can be found again in my BCS um, under manage your membership, raise your IT profile and gain professional recognition. And then you just select the um, registration you're interested in. But the difference between a qualification and a standard is these are revalidated. This is about currency and maintaining competence and demonstrating that you're maintaining your knowledge and keeping up to date. So with each of the standards, they're revalidated. You provide an updated CV and, and, and evidence of um, that you're undertaking continual professional development, which everybody does, but sometimes they don't document that. So you can track and document your development activity using our CPD tool, which again is in my BCS, the member secure area. We, um, with the first one, um, I won't go into too much detail about these because I'm conscious of time, but our IT tech is a um, downloadable application form. Um, you provide evidence of um, communication, technical and non-technical skills is reviewed by BCS and then you should get the outcome within 10 working days. You can use the post nominals RIT tech after your membership post nominals and it's revalidated to every three years. And with all the standards, you can opt to go on to a public register. With CITP or chartered status, as you would expect, it's a little bit more involved. We're looking at a breadth and a depth of knowledge. So we're looking at um, a, a downloadable application form and a CV um, demonstrating, as I say, um, your employment history. So, you know, so the assessors know where you've come from and how you've got to where you are today. It's looking at Sophia level five. Um, the first part is this um, application review by our assessors, and then you're invited to an online interview. Um, we ask you to choose an area of specialism so we can match you with the relevant um, assessors to have um, an informed conversation. And what they're actually looking for uh, as an indicator is here. So this is an example of Sophia level five. But again, using the Sophia Plus tool, that is invaluable when you come to apply for any standards because you can go to your area of specialism, look at the skills levels 
at Sophia level three if you're going for RIT tech or five if you're going for chartered status. And as I've just shown through the demonstration, it will tell you what tasks and responsibilities you will be doing. It will tell you what um, behaviours you'll be exhibiting. So when you come to write your evidence, you can just show how you actually um, demonstrate you meet that criteria by giving examples of how you do that. Um, you won't get the um, outcome on the day. Um, you get it 10 working days later. You receive a certificate of current competence. Um, you can use the post nominal CITP again after the membership post nominals. And um, you will um, revalidate your CITP in five years' time. So, about four years, six months before you'll be told um, to submit evidence of CPD and to provide a new, you know, updated CV. And, um, you know, people that I work with through the organisational membership are, um, through providing these workshops are pleasantly surprised around um, the, the chartered application process. They say it's a great opportunity to showcase what they've achieved over the years um, and also that it makes them reflect about what they've achieved and it's quite motivational. So they say, you know, because the assessors put them at ease and it's more of a chat, um, that that way that they they sort of are able to showcase um, their, their achievements and, and they found it, you know, as I say, motivating to come through the process. If anybody is unsuccessful, they receive full written feedback so they can address those areas and reapply at a later date. And in terms of um, when you should apply for RIT Tech or when you should apply for Chartered, it really depends on when you feel that you can demonstrate that you can um, meet the standard. And that will vary from person to person, depending on what roles that you've undertaken and what organisations you've worked for. And if you are successful, then, you know, you might want to achieve um, um, help your colleagues or, or others, um, you know, by becoming a chartered mentor. I mentioned earlier that we also award um, engineering council registrations. Um, the CENG and ING um, pretty much follows the same route as the chartered IT professional status. So with that, um, you, there is a um, downloadable application form where you evidence how you meet the standard. And in this case, it's actually the UK um, Engineering Council UK spec that you have to meet. Um, and I'll show you that in a moment. Um, and there's a lot of overlap, actually, between CITP and CENG. And I mentioned earlier, some people hold both. So, you know, if you are interested in both, you can use um, some of the evidence for both as well. Um, so you submit your application, then you do um, an online interview. And in the case of the Engineering Council registrations, they call them professional review interviews or PRI interviews. For those that hold accredited qualifications, so in the case of Chartered Engineer, for example, um, you would hold an accredited master's degree and an accredited bachelor's degree. You can then um, go straight to the interview um, without providing um, evidence of the underpinning knowledge. But majority of people that apply for these registrations actually go through what we call the experiential route, which is um, providing evidence of qualifications and training and experience experience at the application stage. And in the case of EngTech, it follows a similar route to the um, uh, RIT Tech application, where it's a downloadable form, there's no interview, um, it's reviewed um, by BCS, um, and then you get the outcome. Now, with the Engineering Council registrations, the outcomes aren't quite the um, aren't notified quite as, uh, in the same way as they are with the BCS registrations. We're required as part of our licensing to put them through an internal engineering council review panel. And that normally they allow sort of four to six weeks and then the outcomes are notified. But exactly the same as the others, you can go on a, um, e uh, the EC register and you can use the post nominals after your membership post nominals. And to give you an overview of the um, standard, this is the high level he headings. And under each of those, there's subheadings. So like there'd be A1, A2, B1, B2, B3, et cetera. And that's how the application form is constructed that you put evidence against. Okay. 
Um, BCS also has a um, mentoring platform. Um, again, the, the way in which this has been devised is to encourage people to seek mentoring um, or become a mentor themselves. It's a great way to give back if you've had a lustrous career and you um, want to give back to other people, um, then look to register on this or you can register for a mentor. Um, again, I've spoken to people who have had a BCS mentor and said they've been instrumental in helping them um, uh, with their career in terms of having that trust, um, trust uh, trustful relationship that they can help, um, you know, help them make decisions about where they want to go next, what they want to do and how they can develop further. So what you do is if you're looking for a mentor, you put on what you're looking for um, and then um, it will return. You know, people will um, look out for it, come back to you and say, I'd be happy to be your mentor. And then it's your decision whether you take them up on that offer. Um, and obviously, if you uh, decide you want to be a mentor, you put your information on there to introduce yourself. And then that will enable people to, as I say, um, pick you out as well as a potential mentor. So as you know, because you wouldn't be attending today, building your professional network is important. And BCS does hold many events um, across the year, um, like, like today's event, um, as well as specialist groups on a, um, uh, obviously talking on a vast range of topics. Um, the events calendar is, is housed within my BCS. So again, if anyone's on here that's not uh, a BCS member, we have a, a calendar which you can pick out dates, pick out events, and then um, register for them. We also have a big event in the calendar that's just gone past, which is the UK IT Awards, which we um, jointly promote with um, Computing Magazine. And um, it gives the opportunity for individuals to get recognition for the great work they do. Um, we also, um, certainly I try and get people involved in the um, judging element as well, so they have an opportunity to network. Um, but, you know, these, these events are, are so important. And also we do promote events on social media, such as LinkedIn. And we've just um, uh, released um, Instagram as well. So um, we're looking for content um, for that to encourage, again, the younger um, uh, generation to, to be involved with BCS and also to find out mothers around their experience, um, hints and tips, and to help them think about a career in um, IT. But I put a link on there because um, I've recently had uh, sent to me, um, and I will share, I'm happy to share this presentation um, so it, it can be sent out, um, around uh, BCS articles, opinion and research. So, so what we've been doing in 2021, and that is actually on the website, but I want, you know, in case people haven't seen it, um, as I said earlier, that members make an essential contribution to um, what we do, and particularly around our mission to make IT good for society. So it's important that all our members have, you know, help us and have a voice. And some of those, I'd like to just go um, over a couple of those um, things that we've um, had involvement with and, and what a difference it's made. So you know, we've got new special groups that are formed to address digital divide, support the LGBTQ and professionals. We've got a new online membership community um, coming out and be launching, which will transform the way in which um, everybody contributes con uh, conversations, particularly around government industry and the media. But what we're trying to do is very much develop our profile across all key th themes. And again, the ongoing one of promoting professionalism, increasing diversity and inclusion, reducing digital poverty and advocating for green IT and its role in tackling climate change. Um, so just to give you some examples of what we've done, um, we were proud to be at the Glasgow for COP26. Um, the, um, we polled our members ahead of that um, and also the chair of the Green IT Specialist Group um, was um, uh, also consulted for quotes as well. And um, we were covered in media from the register to City AM and hosted on the websites of sec um, sector stakeholders like Engineering UK. Um, 
but also like national AI strategy. So the government used BCS's advice and guidance on its government.gov.uk um, website and, it and when it launched its national AI strategy late in September. Um, also, the IET um, interviewed um, Dr. Um, Bill Mitchell, for, who's our head of uh, policy, um, for a lead think piece. So, um, can the UK lead the world in AI standards? AI and breast cancer consultation response. Um, so, BCS supported the NCS's proposal that the use of AI for image analysis in breast cancer screening should not be endorsed in the UK at present because of the significant risk of overdiagnosis. However, the potential of AI for the effective diagnosis of breast cancer in the near future is significant. And again, Chair of the BCS Health and Care Executive was quoted in um, various media, including Daily Telegraph and Digital um, Health. We um, also provided input around patient data warning, um, the post office horizon IT scandal, um, Facebook outage as well. So in early October, we worked with Adam Leon Smith, chair of the BCS software testing SG to provide a rapid response commentary as the story broke. His analysis was covered by national media from Guardian to the Mail, further, further establishing our reputation for insight on this visible tech issue. And also tackling social media abuse and online safety. Um, again, we were invited to speak on Sky Sports News, BBC, LBC Radio around online racial abuse for England footballers. Um, we've also done stuff on uh, gaming and new laws in China, BCS Women, Diversity and Inclusion, um, Thought Leadership for the BCS Te um, Fellows Technical Advisory Group, and um, one of our leading um, leads in our computing at schools um, called Beverly Clark has also um, just written a successful children's book, The Adventures of Abra and Chip, introducing young um, readers to the world of technology. So why don't, you know, have a look out for that and obviously read that in more detail on the website. But what I wanted to do is give you some insight into, you know, what we do with the, um, you know, at, at behind the scenes at BCS. Um, to influence and try and make a difference. We also have a um, online career centre, a learning career centre, which has e-learning modules, videos and personal assessments to help you develop your soft skills. Um, and that could be business and negotiation skills, um, development and self-development, or it might be just doing some personality and um, questionnaires. Um, but it also has industry sector trends. So, again, this is a platform that's available to use um, at your own leisure. You can pick out things that might take a couple of minutes. They might take longer. It might just be a case of reading something or listening to a video. And I just wanted to show here on the left hand side how many um, uh, support materials there are for each of the uh, topic areas and then what once you go into those how it looks when you access that information and again this is very much for you to use at your leisure um, and to um, take advantage and I know um, some of the younger members of staff that work with me have um, been using this to help them with their um, personal development. We provide a quarterly magazine, member magazine called IT Now, and a weekly newsletter called EBCS. Um, back copies of IT Now can be found in my BCS, the member secure area. Um, we also, unlike other professional bodies, have a publishing department where members can get at a discounted rate um, access to um, purchase uh, books. But I'm being told as well that in around February time, we are looking to launch um, a digital library. So again, look out for that. Um, we at BCS are always looking for contributions from our members for our um, magazines. So if there's anything you're interested in, if you're passionate about a particular subject, um, even if you um, aren't, you know, or don't want to write it, then you can be interviewed um, to actually, um, and the article will be then written by our content team, and then you could get it approved if needed or 
um, contribute it um, from your from your own perspective. But it's a great way to raise your profile and also again to support some of the um, topics that we will be running in the magazines. Normally each. Um, uh, a quarterly magazine has a theme, but we also have feature articles that we will include um, to um, then cover other um, topics of interest. There are other member benefits as well that you can take advantage of. Um, I'm not going to read these, but you can see um, there's another um, a number of benefits here that you may or may not be aware of. Um, and in addition, um, you can use the London offices. So as a BCS member, if you're in the, um, which obviously you are in the London area um, and you want to go into the office and use that space, um, you can do without um, there being any charge. Um, and as you can see, for those of you that have not been there, it's, it's a really nice space. It's easy to get to. So I, I fully recommend taking advantage of that, certainly uh, when perhaps the uh, situation with COVID has calmed down a little bit. I just want to round off now by saying, you know, um, involvement, as this title says, involvement does make a difference. We want, um, as I said earlier, our members to have a voice and we can only do what we do within BCS if we, um, you know, uh, listen to what you have to say and we um, get your support in helping us um, achieve our um, aims. So it may be like you are now joining um, a branch. It may be that you're happy to be a volunteer. So we have um, our assessor community who do our professional standards. They get to listen to the um, people talking at the interviews. Um, so they hear all the challenges and the things that are going on in the industry across all sectors. So whilst they're helping us, it's also a valuable um, opportunity for them to sort of um, find out what's going on as well in the industry. But it's like anything, you know, it's like um, for somebody joining a gym, if you join the gym and you have best intentions, but you end up either not using it or you don't find out what classes they have, you're never going to get the best experience. So think about what works for you. And then, you know, just, um, you know, if, as I say, take, take full opportunity to, to uh, and take full advantage of, of those areas. Um, as I said earlier, if there's anything that you want any further information on, please feel free to, to get in touch and I'd be more than happy to help and um, point you in the right direction if it um, means talking to somebody else within BCS. But I'd like to again thank you for your time this evening. I hope you've enjoyed the presentation and I hope it's given you ideas about how you can get more involved um, and get more from your membership um, and also support BCS but um, also encourage others that you may know that aren't part of the community to become part of our community. Um, I've got my contact details on there. If you're not a member, there's also the link for you to join. Um, but I'd just like to say thank you very much. Um, I'll come on to video now and ask if there's any questions. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sam, Sherilyn. Um, I guess I can open the start the video as well. It's down there for me. Yeah. Uh, you click once is submission. Yes. Um yeah, we have um a couple of questions from uh Jill. Uh I guess the first is probably fairly simple. Are any government departments organizational members? Yes, we do have some of our, our government our government departments. Um, I don't actually um, account manage any of those, um, apart from actually one of our largest, which is HMRC. Um, my colleague tends to um, manage some of the others, but I know, for example, the, uh, I believe the Foreign Office is, is also an uh, organisational member. Yeah, I, I think the, um, the border force um, at Croydon, while well, was a organizational member I, some years ago but. yeah and if anybody wants um further information about anything then as i say please feel free to get in touch um 
you know there there's ways in which as i say we can um I, I you know i'm happy to pick up any inquiries around um you know questions around individuals supporting individuals or if anyone works for an organization and wants to know more about how we support those happy to to help as i say this is about you know everybody getting the most out of uh, the bcs membership okay um Imo, did you want to comment on that? Because you know, I believe you can um, mute. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure I want to comment on that. Oh, I see. Okay. I was just, I was just, um, I was just maintaining the list of questions. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's, um, that's fine. Um, the next question was um, again from Jill. Um, I don't think that's actually online anymore, but. Um, can can you still get access to Sophia Plus version seven? So, um, as a BCS member, the version eight will be uploaded. Um, for organisations that you're using it, if they've um, used version seven for their role profiles, um, some will move to version eight. Um, some will choose to do that in a timely fashion. They will be able to then get access to both. Um, I think it's worth mentioning that as a BCS member, um, you, you can use the framework um, for personal use, but you would be breaching any licensing if you used it from an organisational perspective. So I feel I'm duty bound probably to mention that because I don't want to get anybody into trouble. <laughs> okay. um, the obvious preference is that everybody moves to VA and keeps up to date with it, I guess. Yeah. And that should be in the member secure area of version eight. And then uh, <clears throat> the next question, you have three standards for engineers, yet only two for other computing professionals. Is there a plan to add a third one for computing? That's a really, that's a really good question because there is a gap between Sophia level three RIT tech, although it covers um, uh, competence up to Sophia level five. Um, but we have been asked around um, whether there is, if it's possible to have something that recognises that um, Sophia level four, so people then can sort of have that um, as a clear differentiator between perhaps somebody who's early career versus somebody who's who's moved uh, further with their knowledge and skills. And that that's an ongoing conversation at the moment. So I think it's a watch this space. I'm certainly having spoken to my um, clients. I know there's an appetite there for that. So, and that's been fed back into BCS. Okay, um, the next one is, I think also fairly easy. Can we have a copy of the slides, please? We we normally um, ask speakers for a copy of the slides so that's that we fine. can put on the branch website. Absolutely happy so with that, that's if fine. You, if you'd like to, well, if you'd like to pass them to Caroline, probably yep. <laughs> so you, can, you can send them to me if you like, and I'll send them back to her. But, um, Absolutely, that's fine. Yeah. I'll, I'll share those. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Okay. And then Jay Henry asks, is, it's just me here. Okay, it's moving on my screen. Is, is the role model plus now populated with the new Sophia 8 with work activities et al.? Yeah, so um, it, it is our, um, yes, it, it, the uh, version eight has been updated into our um, platform. So as I say, it's down to the organizations that are using it um, or have been using it. Um, anybody new would be accessing version eight and any other competency frameworks or value um, uh, frameworks uh, that they want to add. Um, but any existing clients would have that option um, as to when they wanted to move fully to version eight. Some okay. of them do it when they up job, update the job roles. And then it's, can you become a member if you're outside the UK? Yes, you can. So we have uh, members globally and we've got international um, branches. Um, and, and the process is exactly the same. We have assessors that are based all around the world. And so we have people that go for registrations that um, the standards that aren't UK based. If I'm honest, obviously, you know, especially when it was in person, sort of a lot of the events were more uh, UK centric. However, there's not been many advantages of COVID, but probably the advantage is that, you know, a lot of the stuff is recorded now. So people anywhere in the world can um, listen to it at their leisure. Okay, and then um, how does the BCS value external certification? 
external certifications, comp TIA, etc., in reference to applications for standards such as RITT tech. Yeah, so I'm not going to call out just one registration. What I want to do is say that um, categorically, all the standards value um, any qualifications and training that have been undertaken that are relevant to what you do. Um, so, you you know, I mentioned earlier about um, the accredited qualifications, and that's why the experiential route was brought in for the Engineering Council as an example, because what, what we don't want to be doing, we want to make sure that we put the right people through, you know, the people that who can meet the criteria are successful at getting these standards. What we don't want to do is, is um, uh, sort of um, disadvantaged people that may have not taken certain qualifications, but have a wealth of experience. So when you apply for the standards, what you do on your CV is you, you put what training and qualifications that are relevant to, you know, the standard that you're going for, and those will all be taken into consideration when they're reviewed by our assessors and that absolutely adds value okay i think we've reached the end of the list of questions yeah i just wanted to add one thing to the international memberships uh, i discovered some time ago and i've forgotten where it was exactly on the bcs site there's a map a sort of mm. interactive map that you can um click on and find out how many members are in any particular part of the world and that's actually quite helpful in uh, getting people to make contact with people local to them. Yeah, I, I must admit, I saw the map at, um, the other week when I was looking at the international because our website's been updated a few times and sometimes I go into it even and I'm working there and I think, oh, that's changed. <laughs> so um, I'll look out for that um, myself because I wasn't sure if that was still there, but I know there was something like that at some point, but I know it highlights. I last, I last looked at it about a year ago. Ah, well, I know it's got the, um, as I say, the international um, sort of areas where there are groups um, and, and Sri Lanka and Mauritius still being two, two sort of um, very active areas as well, um, the same as um, Pakistan and India. And I know with our higher education qualifications and professional certifications, we are seeing more and more people taking these qualifications um, abroad as giving a route into a technology career. Thanks very much. Well, okay, well, thank you very much for a very informative presentation. Um, I apologise for the late start, but um, was uh, it was outside my control, certainly, as uh, I couldn't get in either. <laughs> no, thank you very so, much. And, and um, um, thank you, everybody, as well, for attending. And um, as I say, please, please get in touch if I can um, help. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone.